We live in a world replete with insects. If you go out on a summer's night, you'll see some insects with two wings, some with four. You'll see many, many types. Scientists now tell us that there are about 1.5 million species of insects. And by all rights, the insects should have long ago overrun the earth. The reason why insects don't overrun the earth is because they have natural predators, namely one of which is the brown bat. The brown bat, which is a very small little bat, will go out at night and will hunt and with its echolocation will find a mosquito, find a housefly and eat them one after another after another. The average brown bat each night will eat about half a pound of insects. If you study the weight of a mosquito, you realize that it's quite a number of insects, about a thousand that it will eat in a nightly foray. But here's the amazing part. All of this is done in pitch black and all of it is done with sound going out and coming back. But how does it do it? How does it measure? How does it tell? It has to tell whether what's in front of it is a twig or a fly. It has to tell whether it's moving closer or further. It has to tell its density. It has to be able to get a whole mental picture of that object so it knows whether it's a leaf or a fly or a bird or whatever. So what the brown bat does is it emits a sound and very, very carefully detects what's coming back. To emit the sound, it has to scream very loud because any sound that you send out and you're getting a reflection back is going to be greatly diminished. So the brown bat lets out a series of chirps. When it's flying at kind of just regular modulated mode, about 10 chirps a second, and it sends these at a very, very loud decibel rate. It sends it out at about 120 decibels rate. That's the equivalent of uh, something like a jet plane taking off. It sends out a very loud scream. Now it's above the human hearing, so we're not troubled by it, but it sends out these very loud screams. And even though it gets back only a part of it, it's reflected back, it has such acute sensitive hearing that it's able to determine the wingspan, the size, the density, the placement of what's in front of it, sends out the 10 beats a second, listens for it back, and is able to get a report. Now, here's the interesting thing about the brown bat. The distance between its mouth and its ear is about one inch. Now, if it's screaming out at a very loud rate so that the reflected sound will come back, and it has very acute hearing, here's the problem. The brown bat should be deaf after one night's flying. Imagine you were to take a smoke alarm and put it next to your ear and listen to that all night long. When it screams out at 120 decibels, it's screaming at a very loud rate so that the reflected sound will come back accurately. Its hearing is very, very acute, so it's able to listen very carefully. It should make itself deaf in no time at all. However, the reason why it doesn't make itself deaf is because there is a muscle that dampens the hearing of the bat. You see, the anvil, the hammer, and the stirrup in the bat's ear, similar to the human ear, transfer, those bones transfer the sound to the brain. Right before it's about to screech, a muscle tamps down that bone. So when it screams, it's effectively deaf. It doesn't hear it. The minute the scream stops, the muscle lifts, so it's able to hear the echo. And you'll hear that coordination. Scream, stop, scream, stop, muscle on, muscle off, muscle off, as it flies around. Now, that's very impressive when it's emitting sounds at about the clip of 10 beats a second. But when it actually has to hunt down a housefly, 10 beats a second is nowhere near fast enough. If you ever try to catch a fly with your hand, you notice it does maneuvers, it cuts left, cuts right. It's very, very difficult. And when a bat is after a housefly, that housefly is doing all of those maneuvers. 10 beats a second is way too slow. When it actually hones in on the insect, it picks the pace up to about 200 beats a second. And that means that coordination is so exact, so precise, 200 times a second. It's screaming, the muscle tamps, and then it stops so it can listen back and forth, back and forth. And it's so perfectly coordinated that it's hard to imagine. In World War I, scientists were given a similar challenge. Those planes in those days were propeller planes. And basically, the pilots explained that the most effective place to put the machine guns were right on the wings. Well, the problem was on the wings were also the propellers. So if the pilot would shoot his guns, he'd shoot off his propellers. 
So the scientists had to coordinate the timing such that each time the propeller moved, that's when the bullet would penetrate. When the next blade of the propeller would come, the bullet wouldn't be there, and they timed it to that coordination. The little brown bat has that coordination with it screaming and it's shutting its hearing off, screaming, shutting its hearing off, putting it back on, putting it back off, and then is able to interpret that sound, create the image in its brain in total darkness. But that's not yet the most astonishing part about the brown bat's ability to hear. If you ever stood in a room with a lot of people, imagine you're in a room with 200 people, some you know, some you don't know, and you might be in conversation right here with somebody, and suddenly something catches your attention. You hear your name. Now, isn't that strange? There could be 200 people speaking, tremendous amounts of conversation, words, discussions went back and forth, but the minute that you heard your name, suddenly you were able to discern it and hear it. Now, how is that possible? You couldn't possibly process all that information, you couldn't possibly listen. Scientists now explain to us that the subconscious mind does a tremendous service for it. us. It filters out unnecessary information. For instance, if you were to stop and listen, you would hear constant distractions. There might be a truck down the street, might be a noise of a coworker, there might be various things, but your mind filters that out so that you can focus on the discussion or focus on what you want to. But the rest of that information is being processed by your subconscious mind. When you're in conversation with that one person, all of the hundreds of other conversations are being processed. They're there. You're not aware of them. But when something is greatly troubling, all of a sudden, oh, my name, you'll focus in on it because your subconscious is processing all that information, yet allowing your conscious mind to be focused until it's alerted you that it's time to switch your conscious mind to someplace else. Now, this ability to concentrate is a tremendously significant tool. Oftentimes, little children don't have it to the same degree. Attention deficit disorder is a manifestation of the lack of that executive function. But here's the point. The human mind is able to filter out many distractions so that it can focus on what it should. Well, here's the interesting observation. Bats talk to one another. So when one bat speaks to the other bat, the other bat hears it, and they can converse back and forth. Yet astonishingly, a bat is able to navigate in a cave. Now imagine you have a brown bat in a cave, and it sends out a sound. It gets a bounce back. Well, there's another bat next to it that sends out a sound, and it gets a bounce back. And there's another brown bat that sends out its sound, and it gets a bounce. So this cave is a bunch of Echoes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. How does a brown bat not get lost? How does it not get confused with other people's screams, other people's screeches? How does it manage to find its own screech? The answer is it was given a filter mechanism. It hears all the other screeches. In fact, if it's necessary to communicate with the other bat, it will focus on it. But when it's not, it filters it out and only focuses on its own echo coming off the wall. Now, if this is not astonishing, let's just focus on the fact that bats live in very large colonies. Often as many as a million bats will be in a cave. Echoes and echoes and screaming and screaming, and yet the bat is able to filter out every other sound, hear only its echo, be able to determine size, dimensions, thickness with it, able to interpret it all at 10 beats a second, 200 beats a second, its ear always shutting off the muscle, shutting it and listening. And when you study the wisdom that's replete in this creation, you should step back and say, this is astonishing. If this is the creation, what does it tell me about my creator? And by studying the wisdom in the creation, you begin to get an eye glimpse as to the capacity, the greatness of our creator.